All right, uh, good to be back here on a Monday, Monday of a bye week, uh, three games under our belt right now, um, of which we've been able to win them all, obviously a good place to be. Uh, I know I spoke on, on Saturday about uh, kind of the tale of two halves, uh, you know, the, the way we came out of the gates and, and built a 35 to, to zero lead. Um, it, was a, it was all three phases contributing, you know, uh, defense, I know they gave a few plays here and there, but they didn't give them much. They certainly didn't uh, allow them to get a run game going, and then we were able to really put pressure on their quarterback, ultimately get a few sacks. Uh, offensively, scored real fast, uh, and the, the film didn't look much different than you thought. It was it was the guys seeing things right, but it was big holes created by uh, by our offensive line. Uh, we passed the ball very efficiently in that first half, and then special teams, you know, the huge contribution with the, the block punt, um, and you know, we got a chance to to play some two minute defense and some two minute offense um, at the tail end, and. You know, we didn't convert on both those offensive uh, possessions, but we got one, we got a field goal, and then defensively um, had a chance to get them in a three and out to get the ball back. So um, going into half felt really good about where we were at, and I know felt good about the opportunity we're gonna be able to provide for a lot of our second, third teamers. And it was really a, a, a mixed bag in that second half. It wasn't without some real positive things happening. Um, ultimately, the scoreboard didn't reflect much positivity as they scored you know they scored three times and we scored once um, but you know that experience is so valuable for for those young players to you know to to know what a game feels like um, a lot of them it wasn't their first game but it was you know it was meaningful time for for sure and, and you know um, I think it also tells them okay how do I get better you get better through your preparation during the course of the week and how you approach practice, um, I, I hope, uh, you know, is, uh, is a little bit differently um, in some regard. And then, you know, at the, at the end, like I said, there was some, some positive things. Some guys uh, did flash uh, in, in the right way. And, you know, that's ultimately, you know, I think those guys playing in the second half, you know, we talked about it, maybe a third of those guys, you know, will Find them to find their way into some real meaningful time, and that's uh, you know we'll be able to chalk that experience up on Saturday as a you know a way for those guys uh, to continue to move forward. So you know this this bye week ahead of us uh, allows us to rest up. We we've, we've been at it for a long time, going back to July 25th when we reported. Uh, it certainly allows us to to look forward at our next opponent, Mercyhurst, and. Um, you know, allow, allows us to get back to the basics at, uh, to some degree as well. So we'll practice uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, we'll go, go out recruiting um, in full force on Thursday and Friday, and then we'll, uh, we'll get back next Monday uh, in our full preparation for, for Mercyhurst. So um, on, the, on the injury side, I know we sustained a few uh, injuries late in that game. Uh, unfortunately, Brock Steele's gonna be out for the season. Um, second to last defensive play he got hurt on. Um, other than that, I think uh, a few guys that uh, you know picked up some things late in the game. I don't think there'll be anything long standing, but uh, you know, Brock was playing a critical role on special teams and his role had continued to grow on the defensive side. So I feel terrible about that. Um, and uh, I know he'll find his way back, but it's, uh, you never want to see those things happen. Um, you know, and then I know on the injury front for guys that haven't played, this week provides, you know, an extra week. So I do think we'll get uh, Mastel. I think we'll get Reed back. Uh, I think Trimble will be back on uh, defense. We'll see with John Johnson what that's what, what that's going to look like. Um, but ultimately, we'll get uh, a few of those guys we've been missing on the offensive side back for sure. So with that, I'll open up for questions. Um, Scott Trey, and then uh, Big Sky, 12 offensive play of the week. Just thoughts of his performance through the first three games? Yeah, I think uh, uh, really explosive. Um, I think, you know, he's not missing much. He, he's not, he hasn't made every guy miss um, downfield, but he's made some of them miss. He's finished runs. Um, you know, he, he had a really good, a true freshman year, but you can see the off season uh, work has certainly paid dividends. And, you know, you know, with him and Adam in particular, I think we got uh, two different styles um, and they, they, they both, they're both seen it well. And they're both, uh, I think, you know, hard guys to bring down in the open field. And, and 
I think fortunately for us, they're getting in the open field quite frequently, and the more we can do that, the better off we're going to be. Talk about the offensive line depth, and how you guys have kind of shored that up a little bit. I guess what have you seen from that, group, especially in a game like Saturday, when they're opening up some pretty big holes for Scottrade and Evan? Yeah, I thought that, you know the starting five that we played with that was the cleanest uh, that they've played in in run per, run blocking and pass protection. Um, and yeah, there was there was gaping holes at times, um, you know, and and I think that combination of playing, you know, we're seeing and, and Connor Moore uh, in, in the interior is is pretty lethal, um, you know, especially with an inside running game. And then I do think Titan Fleischman and, and Cedric Jefferson have played quite well in these these first three games. And, and however it shakes out for us moving forward when we get some guys back, um, I think the five guys that have played and the new two guys, I guess, have, have really solidified themselves as guys that, you know, uh, have earned the right to be on the field. Um, uh, the, some of those pass plays uh, that the defense allowed, and there was that one drop by Moss yeah. that probably would have been a touchdown. Uh, what, did you see anything? Yeah, that? I think, you know, that was one thing with our ones. They didn't, uh, they gave up the one touchdown in the first half, but we had probably three busted coverages, and that was one of them. Um, that would have been a touchdown had they completed that ball. Um, so yeah, there's some things to correct, um, you know, some adjustments, communication that we didn't uh, quite get on the same page, and, and I think that was one. And then they had two other big plays in that first half that were really due to our miscommunication more than it was uh, anything they particularly did. Now the presentation, the motion, I suppose, is what they did more than um, you know making a making a play. So yeah, definitely some things to correct from that the, the first group. Um, and you know, as we prepare this week, that's part of it. I think looking at these first three, three games and saying, okay, where where have we uh, had some mistakes? You know, where have uh, you know our ability to recognize what's in front of us, communicate, all be on the same page? Where have we been a little bit off in that regard, and, and really work to correct those things? And then uh, Miles Hansen making both of his field goals. Uh, what, what, you, what are just your thoughts on? Yeah, I thought you know it was his best day of the three. Um, not just because he made all his kicks, but I thought just the consistency with the kicks was was there. And you know it ends up being seven for him, right, and, and for the day. So um, positive. And, and we're three games in. Uh, we've made all our extra points. I know we had two two misses, the one block down in Utah Tech. But I think three games in, while we haven't really tested. Um, you know, test them with any real deep kicks. I think the consistency, uh, I think, is, is has been solid. You know, I think there's there's no denying that. And, and you know, where you know where Casey's health gets over the next couple of weeks and what that means, I think that's definitely a question of where we continue to move forward. Because I think Miles has done a decent job of um, saying, "Hey, okay, I, I can go out there and and, and be consistent and, and where exactly the range." Is um, I don't think we've maybe tested those limits yet, but um, you know, feel good about the day yet. Well, Tommy uh, sliding and get out of bounds a couple of times. How much you know have you seen him prioritize making not necessarily the smarter play, but prioritizing his health over? Well, I get the, the smarter play. Um, his health is the smarter thing. Uh, no, I think there were some real good examples in that game. I, I think he. He, he slid once, which he hasn't done a lot, and even the way he allowed himself to get tackled a couple times um, was was less combative than he might otherwise be, and, and then he was able to get out of bounds multiple times. I I know we talked a lot about um, you know being able to limit him through the first part of the season. Uh, I think we've we've done that. Some things, you know, scrambles just end up happening. Um, some of the read plays. I know there was a couple of those. I think two of those in the game that he ends up pulling. Um, but no, I think he he understands that uh, you know for him to be with us over the long haul is the most important thing. And you know choices that you make in the moment sometimes are very difficult. But he's he's done a good job so far. You mentioned um, after the. The, the cramping of in the last game that you know he should have gave on that that play. Did you guys have a conversation at all about like that that specific? Well, thing? I just think that one in particular he could have. Uh, so yeah, I think you know we were getting the lead built up. We're we're twenty eight to zero. We had three three possessions after being up twenty eight to zero um, that he played in. You know I think it you know error on error on the give. You don't need to force anything. You know there'll be points in time down in distances situations that. 
you know, if it's a 50-50 read, well, the 50-50 you know, falls on him keeping it. But I think, yeah, we've had those conversations, and I think that was a good learning, learning experience down in the Duck Tank. Uh, with Jordan Chance still sitting uh, in the games, you know, they're in the fourth quarter. How do you see Tom kind of, like, mentor them, maybe in a game or throughout the week uh, for them to be prepared for the gold rush setting? No, I, I think he does a good job, just generally speaking. I think the more now they can apply some game experience, you know, to those conversations, um, and even the way that occurs within a game, I think, uh, yeah, he definitely takes that role very seriously. Um, and, you know, he's about as good an example about how to go about your business as there possibly can be. So I think he's, you know, within that room, he's definitely a leader. Uh, Hunter Parsons, who's again, is the name that's thrown around a lot with that mm-hmm. D-line depth, getting a sack on Saturday, I guess what have you seen from him? Yeah, I think, I think what Hars- uh, what, what, Parson, what Hunter Parsons has done through three games is solidify himself as a guy that it's going to be playing on the, uh, on Saturdays. Um, I think we came in the year with that being our thought, but I think his play has been very consistent, and you know he's continued to change himself physically um, in each of his years, and you know, I think he's gotten to the point where you know along with Zach Cruz, those two um, we feel completely comfortable putting them on the field, and then you know there were several plays early in that game where we had all four defensive ends on the field at the same time, you know, being able to slide Brody and Kenny in uh, to the interior spot. So I think the emergence of, of Hunter um, and really him solidifying that role has been apparent over the first three games. What have you thought about your short passing game? I know you had a bit of an emphasis on yeah. that camp. I think it's been, uh, it hasn't been perfect by any means, but I think it's been really good. I think uh, Tommy's just below 70% right now, completion percentage, and a lot has to do with uh, the ability just to throw and catch routes that are five and six yards down the field, you know, and and taking what the defense gives us. And him being able to process and and pick that that route, and our guys being able to run good routes, catch it, and then do something with it after the catch, I think has happened several times. So... I couldn't tell you exactly what the portion of his completions is, but the, the reason for the high completion rate is a lot of those those throws we are doing the simple things. Um, NFL uh, Alex Singleton had a had a pick, and he's a captain for the Broncos. And then Hardy, uh, you know, had the the block punt. Uh, just yeah. any thoughts on those three guys, especially in Detroit as well, having some yeah. Practice? No, it's what you want to see. You know, I, I think those guys. Uh, you know, Alex is a proven vet. Um, you know. Proven vets, you're a, you're a key, you know, piece to their team. Obviously, on the field, but then the leadership, uh, and just to get a pick right out of the eight. I think he's he's going to continue to have an impactful career as long as he plays. You know, Daniel, um, you know, watch Hard Knocks to get a little bit more of a look and decide you know, what the Bears decided to do. And I know one of the on the last show is they kept they kept another end as opposed to uh, an interior guy. And I don't know if that was Danny Daniel necessarily. But then you go and make a play like that on special teams, it all adds up. And, um, you know, to, so for him to gain traction, it's going to have to be those type of plays. So uh, awesome, awesome for him to be able to do that. And I know they ended up, uh, you know, I think scoring on special teams and scoring on defense, and they didn't do a lot on offense. So, uh, you know, they got to win and they're moving in the right direction there. And then Troy, I, I didn't uh, get a chance to follow that game, but I know um, it looks like he's he's got his role back and expect big things out of him him this year so excited for those guys Coulter do you have anything yeah sure hey coach uh, a couple for you just the timing of this buy does that give you extra time to recruit or how does it impact recruiting to be able to- yeah whether it was this week or next week it probably wouldn't matter necessarily but to have an early bye week as we are still in the process of uh, you know I think making a lot of decisions in this class uh, to be able to get out and uh, see coaches see games live kind of across the, the landscape of our recruiting footprint uh, is really important and, and we'll get the buy later in the season as, which is where our, our one has typically fallen and not that you can't do recruiting later in the season but uh, I think for us right now is high school um, high school seasons are, are taking off I think it's it's going to be good. It's it's, it's good timing, and, and we'll get out like I said in full force. Yeah, the fact that it is kind of like the heart of the high school season does that like make it easier, tougher to evaluate? I mean, how does that work? Just where where the high school is at? In, well, in I think the nature of a lot of the recruiting we do 
and especially when you're talking um, metro areas that you know guys uh, can still pop as seniors uh, I'm thinking of the Metroplex Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth I'm thinking of Houston um, maybe those two places in particular down in Texas there's gonna be guys that probably you know their senior year is gonna be why they get recruited more than anything they had done until this point and to be able to identify those guys now and get on them now and maybe get a chance to get some of those guys up say in October versus missing that that opportunity and not that we couldn't do it from afar not that we couldn't do it from just watching you know uh, watching video but you know being boots on the ground sometimes you you figure out some things a little bit differently than you would otherwise and especially in a game week mode I, we get a chance to watch a lot of film as the week goes on but to have the contact with coaches and, and you know it, it might be as simple as one coach says hey did you see this kid at this school and, and then you go to the next school and they say you know it's kids emerge and they pop and it happens it happens basically at the beginning of the year every year and, and that's that's kind of what we're after um, I'd say we're about half committed in this class right now so we got plenty of work uh, left to do and this will be a big week for it. With, with the gold rush, is that a, an opportunity for recruiting as well? I mean, did you guys have guys there? I mean, some of the basketball guys. Yeah, we had, uh, yeah, we had a, a big recruiting weekend. We had eight official visitors. Um, three had been committed, so five weren't. So we had uh, a ton of unofficial visitors, um, all of our you know, in-state committed guys. So yeah, it was, uh, it was big. And I think, you know, the, the game, game experience is, is what you're trying to capture with this particular recruiting weekend. I know we'll have recruiting weekends down the road where there isn't a game involved necessarily, but if we can, we can get guys here for a game and they can get a chance to, you know, get a really good feel for that. And then you couple that with a bye week where yesterday morning we could spend um, some real quality time with all those recruits. It was kind of a perfect combination to have as many um, here on campus as we did. Obviously, the game day part of it is a huge part, but do you take them? Like, I mean, I was going through campus, we had a few, you know, just hit buzzing all over the place. Do you let them see all that, like the tailgates and all the stories and all that stuff? Yeah, we spent, I would say, oh, a good three hours kind of with the combination of campus and uh, certainly meeting with different individuals within the program. Uh, but then, yeah, just, uh, you know, taking a, taking a lap around the stadium, I think, is is a, is a pretty impactful deal getting a chance to yeah see the different aspects of the support the tailgating um, get a chance to see the progress with the indoor uh, and then get you know get the those guys down on the field before the game um, you know I think it's all it's all positive and, and you know I think those guys that were here from out of state walked walked away, uh, flew home I, I suppose with a well, much better sense for what what their opportunity would look like here and I think the weekend made a really good impression. What do you think the guys that have never seen the horses think of that? <laughs> when the horses run you guys out on the field? I think that's pretty cool. I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, yeah, that whole sequence, um, and I we don't get a chance to see the video, but I know they had Coach Kohler on there, and I heard he, he knocked it out of the park. Um, so that whole sequence, and then with our guys running out, you know, it's, it's one of those aspects of, of playing college football that uh, – I think guys want to be part of. It's certainly not the most important thing. The game is the most important thing, but all, all that excitement leading up to it, the energy in the stadium, um, you know, is what they're, what they're after. And we can, we can certainly show show that to them, and, and it, it's something they can see themselves being a part of and really enjoying. Uh, the one personnel thing I wanted to ask about was just the interior defensive line. We've talked a lot about the edge guys. Yep. Um, to me, it seemed. I mean, it's hard to quantify the statistics, but watching. Yeah, that combination of, of those four guys, so so Paul and Zach, and then Alec Eckert and, and Blake Schmidt are are playing well. And, and uh, again, not accumulating great stats, but but by and large doing their job. Um, you know, getting push, I guess, is, is what you're looking for, both in the run and pass game. Um, you know, opening things up, making it clear for our linebackers. Uh, you know, and, 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 and you know, the fact that we have those four guys going, and in some ways you could see them all kind of as starters. I, I know, you know, we've been rolling with Alec and um, Blake to start the games, but Zach and 
all have just as big a role. And so, you know, bringing Alec in and, and finding a place for him, getting Zach back and, and you know, and healthy, um, you know, we need to be able to play four in there some way, somehow, and that, that group of four has been really effective so 